touched Ember before? And who else touched it in like, say, the last year? Okay. So this might be like a little basic for some people, but hopefully a couple of the concepts um, help you out. Um, so I'm Jimmy, uh, Jimmy5469 online. 5469 is uh, J-I-M-Y on a phone. So I don't know if you've known me for how many years, did you know that? <laughs> so <laughs> ironically, you don't spell my name with an A or a single M, so. Um, that trips some people up. I, uh, I have a two-year-old daughter. Um, I found out recently, like, a, you know, a couple of the people that I've, you know, seen in these groups for, like, for years now had no idea I had a kid. So I figured, hey, everybody, I've got a kid. Now I've covered my bases. Um, so, like, one of my, you know, favorite hobbies is mountain biking, so that's something huge with me. Um, but generally, I like being outdoors and doing that kind of stuff. And when I'm inside, I'm either doing this or you know, playing video games or something. So um, I, started, uh, I started playing with Ember probably about almost three years ago. Um, I played with Angular and some Knockout JS, if anybody has seen that before that, and, and kind of wanted a little more um, you know, convention. So, so I moved to Ember uh, since I played, you know, some with React and some of the other things too out there. So, um, but yeah, I've been doing Ember for a while. So, so into that. So, um, getting started with Ember. First thing you need to know is to get Ember CLI installed. So, simple npm install. It's global. Ember CLI, it also has a Bower dependency and a PhantomJS dependency, so you're gonna have to install that if you haven't already, but I'm sure you probably have. Um, Ember CLI is a build tool. It provides a lot of things for you. It provides generators. Um, it helps manage your dependencies. Um, it's a development server for you, and it, it can even help out with things like deployment. So, so let's go ahead and create our first app. So, um, so the first thing you'll notice, Ember at the beginning. So all uh, Ember CLI statements start with Ember, so that's pretty basic. Um, and the next thing is, uh, it's kind of a convention in Ember that like pretty much everything you type into Ember CLI is lowercase and hyphenated. So, um, so if you're doing it that way, you're probably doing it how everybody else is. If you're not, you'll probably be fine still too. Um, now, the new command, what that does, that actually com creates your project, just like a Rails project. It even creates the first commit for you. So like when you start a new, new Rails project, it, it'll get you your git ignore, but it's not gonna actually create that first commit for you. Uh, this does, so. So I guess that has a git dependency too. Um, so this is the actual first commit that it creates. Um, that's the commit message right there. And uh, one of the funny things about this is if you look at the top, the, every commit needs an author, right? So, um, so they needed an author for this first commit. So they just made one up, Tomster, tomster at emberjs.com. The funny thing about this is that uh, this email address was not claimed on GitHub until recently. Um, so, one day there was a random guy in the community decided, you know, woke up, I'm gonna, um, what happens if I add Tomster at emberjs.com to my GitHub account? So he added it to his GitHub account and it like let him in, he saw all the commits and everything, even before verifying it. So pretty interesting. So he, uh, he went and talked to some of the maintainers and let them know about this and, and they took over the email account and created a Tomster uh, login for GitHub. So that's kind of cool. Um, so this is what it, it generates to start with. Don't worry that this is small and you can't read it, but um, the uh, keys here are, um, it, it creates your basic template. So your application template is, is kind of your like, um, that is like your main layout template for your application and Looks like my little red boxes are 
not quite lined up right. The other one's supposed to be highlighting the README. Um, and so like, check out the README. It's super useful. It'll show you how to like, how to clone the project again if you're, if you're uh, it, you know, somebody else is getting set up on it. You know, how to, how to run tests, how to run your server, everything. So, so let's go ahead and uh, we've got our first commit. We have a working Ember application, so let's go ahead and uh, just start our development server and see what we get. Um, so Ember server on the command line. Uh, you can also shorten that if you like. And, uh, and this is what you get. So then your command line up there, it tells you to look at 4200. And there's your application. Um, so Ember CLI, uh, you know, it's kind of like your Webpack. It's kind of like your Grunt or Gulp. Uh, um, but it's, it's Ember. And it's a, kind of a, an abstraction over those type of layers. So you don't have to think about it too much. You just run Ember server. It's got all the configuration set up for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and some of the things that it provides for you is uh, auto-reloading whenever you change files. And recently, they started um, adding hot-loading for, for styles. So if you change your, your styles files, then that, it'll swap that in without a refresh, um, which is actually pretty cool because uh, for people using Ember projects, never had to upgrade anything to get that. I mean, they have to upgrade Ember CLI, but they don't have to change anything with configuration, anything. And all of a sudden, they start getting hot loading for style. So that's, that's some of the allure of Ember is that, um, you know, they change out the rendering engine to make it faster for you. You don't have to change your code. Uh, they change out Ember CLI to make it, you know, work better for you. And you don't have to change your code or do anything with your configuration. Um, so. Like I said, it's kind of like a webpack or something. What, it, what it's actually using is something called Broccoli under the hood. And that is, uh, it's just a build tool. It's one of the Ember community members wrote, um, and it's supposed to be like really fast for, for building up your files. So, so that's pretty nice. All right, so let's get into it and write our first component. So I. It's been a long time since I learned Ember, but most of the time, when, back then, uh, people were taking the approach of, of t talking about routing and, and working their way down to the markup itself, um, which I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. I think you know, most of you, if you haven't played with Ember, you've played with React or something else, and you're familiar with components. So let's start there. Um, so the uh, application um, that we're working on is just like a Twitter clone, basically. And so the first component, we're going to, you know, if you imagine the home page of Twitter, you see the list of tweets. And each, you know, each individual tweet, that's going to be a component here. So a tweet list item. So some of the things to note about the components. Um, again, lowercase and hyphenated, you're going to see that all the time. But with components, it has to be two or more words. And that's to align with, uh, with the, you know, the component specs. So. And this is what it ends up generating for you. Uh, it generates a JS file and a template file. So I know some of you React guys are probably cringing right now, but this is how everybody else does it. So we've got a JS file, and then we've got um, well, what is for us is a handlebars file. And basically, every, every property on this component uh, in the JS file is something we can bind to in our template. So when we build out the component a little bit, this is what it might start looking like. Um, so you can see the arrows here. We've got author pointing to, you know, bound to author. And then we've got tweet.txt, which is going to bind to the tweet up there. Um, so for, for a component, you're normally going to have, like, attributes that people are going to pass into you. In this case, it's tweet and an on delete function. Um, and Ember has some, some cool things uh, called computed. So here we've got computed alias. So we've computed uh, right into the tweet.author. So now in our template, we can just say author instead of having to say tweet.author. Um, so this is a pretty basic computed, but there's all kinds of computeds like, uh, like ands and um, all kinds of stuff. So, so that's definitely something you want to check out if you're getting started. 
Um, and, and actually, kind of the, one of the reasons for it is like if you look at like an Angular template, you can say like if in there and then have a conditional after the if statement. Um, you can't do that in Ember. So there's some add-ons that you can install that allow you to do something like that, but by default you can't do that. So, so you, you would always have to say if and then something that would equate to a Boolean. Um, so a lot of these Ember computed um, functions a lot of times can help you like stage up those things. Um, and then lastly, you can see the actions. There's this actions hash or whatever. And so like if you look at my button on click, that's going to raise the delete action. You need to put the delete um, inside this actions hash. Um, and what this is actually doing is this is just calling whatever delete function got passed into the component uh, with the tweet that needs to get deleted. Also, if anybody has any questions along the way, just feel free to, to shout. Um, so this is how to use a component. You, uh, you just, you know, like, like most of your other frameworks, you're just going to be putting it in your DOM somewhere. Here I'm on my application uh, template. I just, I'm eaching over the templates um, or the tweets, and I have a component for each tweet there. And you can see I've got my on delete uh, that I'm passing in and my tweet that I'm passing in so it knows how to work. Um, so one of the things that I was talking about with components is that like uh, the template is bound to the JS file. And so in Ember, like every template has some kind of a JS file that it's bound to. Um, and so here we have another template file. This is a kind of like a route template, right? It's the main route is the application route. Um, and so what's that bound to? Um, that's bound to what we call a controller. Um, controller, I mean, it's like if you think about this relationship, the controller template relationship, it's very similar to the component, you know, template and JS file relationship. Uh, the controller gets a lot of heat because there's something that has been in the works called routable controllers for a while, or routable components for a while, and that's basically going to replace this, like, that, like, application HBS would actually be a component and have a component file behind it instead of a controller file. Um, for the most part, there isn't a whole lot of difference. Uh, the way that the controller file and the component JS file work uh, can be slightly different. Um, as far as like setup and teardown, components live a very long time. So, um, so you have to worry about tearing them down manually whenever you're leaving a route and stuff like that. Where components, they tear themselves down every time it comes out of the DOM and, and new themselves up whenever it goes in. So, so for example, if you're leaving a route and then coming back to the route, you might have to do some, some teardown whenever you leave the route. So whenever they come back to the route, it's all ready to go. Um, and you're not like in this weird state that you left it in. Um, so like I said, again, that'll be going away soon um, whenever we get routable components. But until then, it's really not that different of a concept. Um, also here you notice, like everything, you, you know, Ember S, shorthand for Ember server, you can do Ember G to generate. All right. So again, here's the, go ahead. Are the uh, shorthands like G and uh, S, are those hard aliases, or is that like NPM where it will just complete partial uh, Oh, you mean like can you change the arguments to it and stuff no, like that, or? NPM stuff, you can do like NPM IN, and it'll figure out what you want to do install. Are those, is S and G, are they hard aliases, do you know? I believe they are, yeah, so. Um, all right, so here we are. We've got our application HBS on the left, and on the right we've got our controller that it's bound to. Um, so now you can see that model property is actually getting bound to a model on here. Now this is a little bit weird. If you've done Ember before, you wouldn't see a model property on a controller like that, but, but just don't worry about it for now. Um, so, so whenever you look at your tweet list item, you pass the properties into that, like your tweet and your on delete function. But on the, 
on the controller, what sets that up? What fills in the model property? You know, if we wanted to pass an action into this and, and uh, stuff, how would that all get set up? And the answer to that is, is the route. So, um, so route is what populates the controller. It, what's pop, well, it's what populates that model uh, property and stuff. So, um, so let's go ahead and create our first route. Let's create like an actual tweets route so we're not just putting, listing our tweets on, on the application. We'll actually list them on a tweets route. Um, and so here you can see, uh, you know, Ember generate route, same thing, lowercase and hyphenated. Um, and, you know, with routes, controllers, and templates, they don't have to be more than, you know, one word, like in a component. Um, so a single word's fine. And then the last thing to note is that, like, this has to match exactly your controller, exactly your template. So if you call one thing tweet and the other thing tweets, it's, not, it's just not going to work up. And that's, that's some of the magic of Ember is you name things right and put them in the right place, and it, it just knows what to do for you. All right, so after you run your generator, you're going to get uh, something similar to this. This guy up here isn't going to be filled in yet. It's just going to be that empty Ember route extend. Um, but uh, we've got the model hook here. And that is a very special hook. And what this hook does is you can return any type of promise from that. And what that's going to do is get the, get the um, result of that promise and set that to your model property on your controller. Um, like I said, it's a very special hook. I couldn't have just called this tweets and then expected a tweets property on my controller. It's just specific to model. Um, and then again, this guy has actions and everything too. So that action, that remove tweet action in my controller, I can, I can bubble up to my route and handle it there. Routes tend to be a good place to handle your async logic. Um, so that way you can, you know, your, your templates and your components can really focus in on like actual data and not having to be juggling, is this real, a real thing or is this a promise or what? So, um, so, so back down to this guy, that model colon null that uh, probably looked weird to some of you guys. You wouldn't normally put that. Um, and in fact, a lot of times you don't even need a controller at all because the data that you want to pass down to your route template would all be in the model in a lot of cases. Um, so this, this wouldn't even need, need to exist. And then you can also do things to bubble your actions right past the controller to your route too. Um, so if you use an older style uh, action, it'll do that automatically. And if you use a uh, newer style action, then um, there's an add-on to help you do that. Um, so that's, that's the route. So one of the, this is like one of the, besides convention, this was one of the coolest things to me whenever I got started with Ember was this notion of nested routes. So like, so if you want to put your main navigation on your application template, all other routes are ne nested underneath that. Maybe you have another like main section of your app that has a sidebar. You can nest everything under that, and then you only have to put that sidebar on your like main parent temp or template there. So, so that's something that I always thought was really cool back in the day, and now um, I think Ang Angular has had it for a while with UI Router and things like that, but it's just built in for Ember. Um, so for the nested ones, slash in the name, no big deal. So this is what it ends up looking like. If you can see on the left there, we moved all of our uh, application um, markup into our tweets markup file. And you see that there's something called an outlet down there. And that outlet, basically what that means is any, any child routes put their content right here. It's just uh, telling it where to put it. So, so on the right here, we've got our, um, we've got our tweets detail, which we're going to, in our case, we're going to pop open a modal dialog and have all the tweets kind of behind that modal dialog. Um, so one of the things to note with this, too, is this modal dialog, that's a component. 
if you see our tweet list item, that, that component is just like an element. It's not, it's not a block. So, so components can uh, take a block, or they can just be like an element on their own. Or they can kind of do a hybrid of both sometimes, too. Like, you know, if, if you want the default, just do the element. And if you want to do something special, then, uh, then you can do it as a block. Um, so the way that works is kind of similar to the outlet thing. You have, this is what was generated in our original component. And we kind of didn't really talk about that yield that's in there. But that yield, basically what that is, is saying like anything, if this is invoked as a block component, anything that gets passed into that block, spit it out in that yield there. All right, now that we have a couple uh, routes, um, we might want to talk about um, how do you pass data back and forth between these routes or between these objects. And uh, there's something called a service in Ember. So we'll go ahead and generate a service for auth because that's something that you're going to need all across the application. Um, so the way you use this, it's going to generate this file for you. And you can put any types of properties and stuff that you want into it. And then you can inject it into any, any Ember object. Um, so you can see at the very top one, auth Ember inject service, we're injecting it into the route. So now if I wanted to get the user, then I would say inside the route, I would say this.get auth.user, and that would get me that user. Or auth.is authenticated, and that would uh, tell me whether the user is currently authenticated or not. Um, now, if you want to, like, like for the for the property is named auth there, and maybe you want to like uh, name it more appropriately so that you know it's a service. You could call it auth service. Anytime you call it something different than what the name of the controller or the service is, you need to specify in quotes there what what service you're talking about. So you can name it. Anything you want, like you can see on the bottom, you can name that injection anything you want. Just pass the name of the service in there, and it'll, it'll take care of it. And by default, if you don't pass anything, it'll just look for the auth service, like you see on the top. Um, now, a service is, uh, you know, you, you want to be careful with them. Use them sparingly, because they can get you into trouble if you're using it to, like, share like tons of data all across everything and that's like how your entire application like works and everything talks to each other through a service it can be kind of dangerous um, and, and harder harder to manage really so so you kind of want to be careful about them use them sparingly but um, but they're definitely there and there's a lot of good use cases for them all right so that's uh, pretty much the basics for writing the code itself. Now, one of the other cool things that um, Ember gives you, that Ember CLI gives you, is, is this add-on ecosystem. So, um, so right here, we were, we're going to go ahead and install Ember CLI SAS because most people aren't using CSS. They're using SAS or something else, right? So, so all we've got to do is Ember, install Ember CLI SAS. And that's going to install all the NPM packages, everything that's necessary in order to run SAS on our project. Um, now, you could ask, why not just do NPM install, Ember CLI, SAS, save dev, or something like that. Um, you could. That would do the first half of what this does. But what this ends up doing is it installs the NPM package, and then it also runs the um, default generator for uh, Ember CLI SAS or whatever the add-on might be. So that's, you know, generally what people do in an add-on is they're gonna like put in their default generator some logic to do to set up uh, to set up that add-on. So so you use Ember CLI or, or Ember install. Um, so like I said again, it's backed by NPM, and sometimes they'll actually install Bower packages too to make them work. Um, and there's tons of great ones. So like, uh, you, you just look around. I mean, like auto prefixer, Ember CLI install auto prefixer, and you're good to go. Like that's all you have to do, and you got your CSS prefixes. It's 
really nice. So, um, so those two that I showed were kind of like preprocessors, right? Like actually uh, hooking up your SAS and um, an auto prefixer into the build process. But there's other kinds of add-ons too. There's uh, UI add-ons, for example. So like here we've got Ember Power Select, which is like a drop-down type thing. So that's actually going to, like if you look in that add-on, it's gonna have a component in there called Ember Power Select. And then that's gonna give you the ability to put Ember Power Select components into your, into your markup. Um, so the place where you wanna go to check out all of these components or add-ons is Ember Observer. So uh, I, I think a lot of people like don't realize that that's out there, but you go to Ember Observer and, uh, and it has all of the add-ons listed and you can get to their Git repos and how to use them and everything like that. Um, and it kind of has them ranked too on like what are the most common, most popular add-ons. So some of the like ones that pretty much end up using in every project, Ember Simple Auth, it helps with authentication, log in, log out, um, protecting certain routes and things like that. Um, Ember CLI Mirage, which is really cool for, um, for your testing. It'll help you um, generate API fakes. So that way, you know, your, your test can hit those, those fakes instead of hitting an actual server and, and running much faster. But one of the cool things about that one too is you can actually use it in development. So if you just run Ember server, it will, um, it'll use Mirage to fake out an API so you can actually like develop against this fake API um, before an API even exists, if you want it, or while you're on a plane or whatever, so. Um, and then Ember CLI Deploy is like a really cool ecosystem for uh, helping with deployments, so. Um, the other main things besides what, like uh, components, controllers, routes, services that we went over, there's models and adapters. Those are specifically for Ember data, which is like a whole topic in itself. Probably could do a presentation just on that. Um, if, you if your API is JSON API or something, then you probably want to look into using Ember data because it's gonna mesh really well with your API and be really easy to use and provide some benefits for you. Um, but if it's a non-standard API or if you're just looking to get into Ember and you, you, know, you just want one, less thing to learn right off the bat. Uh, you can just use straight like jQuery Ajax calls and your model hooks and it'll resolve them to the model property just, just like anything else. So, um, and then Ember, uh, you know, CLI also has all the testing stuff set up too. So you can generate acceptance tests, which is gonna actually click around your app and make sure things are working right. Um, integration tests, which are gonna click around a component, make sure everything is working right. And then um, there's also unit tests too, if you have a complex function you need to test or something. So, um, as far as uh, helpful tools, if you're gonna start playing with Ember, I mean, maybe even before installing Ember CLI, you probably wanna install Ember Inspector into your browser. Um, you can go around the web and see any, any other website that's using Ember, and this will inspect into their website and show you kind of like how it's working uh, and everything. So it, it can kind of offer you tips on how to develop your own application, and also it's a huge help for debugging whenever you're working on your application. Um, and then Ember Twiddle is kind of like your JS Bin or JS Fiddle, but with uh, all the Ember things pre-installed, uh, you can use, you know, ES6 imports and everything like that. Um, it's really helpful whenever you find yourself caught in a situation and wanna uh, isolate your problem and, and figure out what's going on. As far as finding help, um, these first few things are uh, kind of like the official Ember places to go look for help. Guides, API docs, Ember CLI itself has docs, so um, I don't think you know, a lot of people realize that starting out, but that'll help you figure out how to use Ember CLI. Um, dis uh, discuss, discussion form. Blogs, 
I mean, we're all through JS here. We know like if it says 2012 on the blog post, probably want to take it with a grain of salt, and that holds true here with Ember too. Um, there's also uh, Ember Community Slack if you like, um, you know, trying to talk to actual people to to figure things out. That'll help you out. And um, we've got an Ember JS room and Cincy Tech Slack, and answers uh, questions questions get answered pretty quickly on there. So. Um, it's all just us, so you can uh, have the comfort of talking to somebody familiar. And that's pretty much all I had today. Does anybody have questions or no? <laughs> Probably in the next week or so. Yeah. <laughs> anybody else? All right.